Workers at the damaged Fukushima nuclear plant moved unused fuel out of a reactor building last week. Now they're moving on to a more dangerous task. They're set to start on Tuesday, the removal of highly radioactive used fuel. Tokyo Electric Power Company workers on Friday completed the transfer of a cask containing 22 assemblies of unused fuel rods. They moved it from the storage pool of the number 4 reactor building to another pool nearby. Officials said they encountered no problems, but they said sand in the pool reduced visibility. They plan to pump the pool clear of particles for the next operation. They'll start on Tuesday moving 1,331 assemblies of spent fuel rocks. That's the vast majority of fuel remaining in the pool, and they'll be taking extra care with the highly radioactive material. This will mark the first time spent nuclear fuel has been removed from a reactor building since the plant was damaged in March 2011 by the earthquake and tsunami. Now, a representative of a nuclear equipment company has some concerns of his own. His company sends employees to the plant to do decommissioning work. Yukiteru Naka said the rules may, may, may make workers too scared of punishment to relate what they've learned on the job. Plant workers will have difficulty distinguishing what information is a state secret and what is not, and as a result, they will certainly feel the pressure. Naka said it was once taboo to raise questions about the safety of nuclear plants and that created the myth that the plants were safe. He says the bill should not be applied to the nuclear power industry. People from Fukushima Prefecture have voiced concerns over a new government bill to protect state secrets. They say disclosing information could be crucial in cases like nuclear accidents. A lower house committee organized a diet hearing in the region of the crippled Fukushima Daiichi nuclear plant. Local mayor Tamotsu Baba attended. Many residents were exposed to radiation because government data about the spread of radioactive substances was not released immediately. Many people fled towards the northwest thinking it was safe. They didn't know that their destination also had high levels of radioactivity. Baba said the disclosure of information is very important. He called for more careful consideration of the state secrets bill. And he said the range of potential secrets is too broad and vague. Hiroya Sumaki from the Fukushima Prefectural Bar Association spoke of what nuclear plant information would be made secret. He said the government keeps changing its explanations. It's not clear exactly what will be classified and the scope is likely to continue expanding. Maki said Japan should learn the lessons of the nuclear accident. He said there should be legislation for disclosing information and not for keeping it secret. A team from the International Atomic Energy Agency is to inspect the decommissioning process at the Fukushima Daiichi nuclear plant. Members are gathering information in Tokyo before heading to the complex on Wednesday. The 19-member team includes experts in reactor decommissioning and radioactivity. The second visit by the team since April is scheduled to run until Wednesday of next week. Team leader Juan Carlos Lentijo said he wants to share with the world what they learned from the Fukushima case. Lentijo added that they will pay particular attention to the way radioactive water is handled at the facility. They will also assess the safety of the effort to remove nuclear fuel from the number four reactor building. The new U.S. ambassador to Japan says her country will continue to support areas devastated by the 2011 earthquake and tsunami. Caroline Kennedy is the daughter of late U.S. President John F. Kennedy. She is visiting the Northeast in her first trip outside Tokyo since she started in her job earlier this month. The ambassador met the governor of Miyagi, one of the three prefectures hit hard by the disaster. <laughs> U.S. troops visited dangerous areas and worked hard rescuing survivors after the disaster as part of their relief mission. The governor said the people of Miyagi understand the importance of the Japan-U.S. alliance. He asked Ambassador Kennedy to pass on her observations about the situation in the disaster-hit areas. And all Americans were inspired by the courage and the resilience of the people here um, during this great disaster. and so. Um, it was important for me to be able to come here as my first trip outside of Tokyo. 
Kennedy says she will study how the U.S. can best help with the reconstruction effort. Japanese leaders are making efforts to gain a foothold in Eastern Europe. The prime ministers of Japan and Hungary have agreed to push for more business deals in various industries. One of the areas that the two countries are considering for possible cooperation is nuclear energy. NHK World's Ayochita sat down with the Hungarian prime minister to get his views on the deepening ties with Asia. The accident here in Japan uh, even uh, intensified that discussion in Europe. Uh, there are some countries who had previously considerable uh, percentage of the total energy produced by nuclear, but now they try to stop the nuclear power stations. Hungary is not that kind of country. If the Europeans would like to compete at the world market with the products coming from America and some other areas also, we have to pro uh, produce cheaper energy for our economy. He's looking to Japan for technological help, but there's another reason Hungary is looking to Asia. The Eastern European nation is export-driven, its most significant trade partner, the European Union. And during the financial and credit crises, Hungary learned the hard way the dangers of depending too heavily on one region. So export is important. If you look at the export figures, uh, close to 75, almost 80% of our export is going to the European Union countries. 
it's not good. I mean, it's good, but it's, you know, it means that you, you stand only one leg, which is very unstable. So therefore, we have a clear-cut strategy opening to the east. Just this June, Orban and Abe met in Warsaw to strengthen their economic partnership. And on Orban's current visit, they made the goal official with a memorandum. And even though the European Union is pursuing free trade agreements with Asian countries, Orban says it's just as important for individual member states to pursue interests of their own. How is your economic policy agenda different from that of the EU? Because the European Union is not a nation, it's not a country. There are some areas which belong to the authority of the European Union, like uh, free trade agreements, but Europe consists of nations, and nations run their own economic policies. So we can't wait for Brussels or any other capital, which is not Hungarian, to do something good for Hungary instead of doing by themselves the Hungarians. So if we would like to have investment, better relationship, we have to do it bilateral basis. Orban says his country strengthening ties with Asia will ultimately come back to benefit the European economy as a whole. Ayuchida, NHK World, Tokyo. Japan is trying to gain an economic foothold in Central Europe, and one country in the region, Hungary, is ready to talk. Prime Minister Viktor Orban has high hopes that Japan could help revive the Hungarian economy. NHK World's Jun Takahashi has more. Orban attended a seminar in Tokyo with a group of business leaders. He called on Japanese executives to invest in his country. Logistically and geographically, Hungary is a key point of uh, the European civilization and the European business community. Europe's debt crisis added to Hungary's economic troubles. 70% of its exports go to other EU nations. So Orban feels the need to shift focus to Asia. Hungarian officials have a strong interest in Japanese technology. Orban met with Japan's Prime Minister Shinzo Abe and the two agreed to deepen cooperation in the energy field. Abe sees Hungary as an attractive market for infrastructure exports, a key pillar in his own growth strategy. Hungarian officials plan to build two more nuclear reactors. They are hoping to produce more energy back home. One Hungarian company produces machinery used in nuclear power plants. It had ties with manufacturer Siemens. But the German firm is ending their nuclear business as the country shifts away from atomic power. So the machinery maker is aiming to foster ties with Japanese businesses. They hope to partner with them and win contracts for Hungarian projects. We have some products we'd like Japanese firms to see, and they have a lot to show us, too. By combining our technologies, we could build new parts for nuclear facilities. Japanese firms are also looking to cooperate with Hungarian ones in the energy sector. Masayuki Tsukawaki is the president of a wind power company. Hungarian officials are mandated to double their renewable energy output. Tsukawaki's company owns the technology for storing electricity generated by wind power, and he sees Hungary's energy policies as a business opportunity. Hungarian officials have set a high target for renewable power generation. To achieve this goal, they'll need to find a way to deal with the inconsistent output of wind power facilities. We have the solution. Hungarian and Japanese officials say deepening ties between energy businesses could benefit both sides. A deal reached in this sector could also lead to more cooperation in Central Europe and Asia. Jun Takahashi, NHK World, Tokyo. Congratulations, you have completed this video with flying colors. Please await your certificate and complimentary fruit basket in the mail before proceeding any further.